Do I really need an Instapot? Find out next on Urban Kitchen Revolution. Hi, and welcome back to Urban Kitchen Revolution. I'm Chef James Hudson. Welcome, as promised, to my home kitchen here in downtown Washington, D.C. Today, I want to take the opportunity to talk about the minimum, of, uh, the minimum equipment that one needs to set up just your average home kitchen. Uh, we'll also touch on small wares, minimum bakeware, and, uh, and then in episode three, talk about knives and uh, knife care and why my knives rock and your knives suck. Pots and pans. What's important in a pot and pan? Well, what's important to me in a pot and pan, first and foremost, is that it's heavy. That it has a heavy bottom and that it conducts heat well. That's especially important in a kitchen such as this where, and in most homes where you have either electric or a really, really bad gas stove. The reason why a heavy bottom pot and pan is important is because it will take that uneven heat from your stove and create a more even base so that your food cooks more evenly. Before you here are the my go-to's. Easily 90 to 95 percent of what I cook at home happens in these pots and pans. So what are they? We'll start with the big ones first. This right here. Uh, pasta pot. Uh, I got this one years and years and years ago, stainless steel. Not a very heavy bottom, but it's not really important because basically all you're doing in this is boiling water or making soups. It comes with a bottom that is, or a top that is also a colander, which is super, super, super important because I can use this as the pasta pot or separately in the sink to drain vegetables in and comes in super handy. Also stack that into here as well, which is very important for a small kitchen where space is a premium. And of course, because I bought these two as a set, the lid fits for either one of them. You can find a setup like this. It is really, really space saving and really, really, really important. The next one. This is called a Dutch oven or uh, you could also call this in French a rondeau. Uh, this has a very, very heavy, thick bottom that is sandwiched, this particular one is sandwiched with stainless steel and copper, which also really, really helps disperse the, uh, the heat really well. Saute pans, I really only have three that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. A nice small one, uh, again, with a thick bottom to create more even heat. A larger one that has a nice big dent in the side of it, so I have no idea how that happened, but it happened like 10 years ago and hasn't affected it at all. Also, with a sandwich bottom to help conduct heat more evenly. And then finally, finally my one and only nonstick pan. Omelet pan. Uh, as you can see, not a big believer in nonstick. They uh, tend to flake, and as soon as they flake, they're no longer any good. They're not only as far as non their nonstick properties, but they also may or may not cause health issues. This is my egg pan. This is the only thing that goes in this is eggs for omelets or my uh, favorite sunny side ups for a Sunday morning breakfast. Finally, cast iron. These cast iron pans have been with me for about 25 years. Uh, we will, at a later date, possibly have a sideshow just directly on the care of uh, cast iron pans. But right now, we'll just talk about why I think they're so important. They, they talk to everything I just talked about. They are heavy. They conduct heat really, really well. They, if they don't conduct heat so well as they keep the heat even throughout the pan. 
they're extremely functional. You can, they're of course oven safe, which is very, very crucial because a lot of cooking that we're going to be doing will involve searing and then putting down in the oven to finish. So uh, this big bad boy right here uh, is an old lodge pan. There's, they still make pans available. They do come pre-seasoned. Uh, this one, like I said, it's got about 20 years of life in it and has no signs whatsoever of going away anytime soon. All right, let's talk bakeware. Uh, bakeware for me, since I'm not a trained baker, but still like to do that every once in a while, is pretty minimal. Uh, again, this is the, the 85 to 90% of your needs scenario. And I've got it narrowed down to four things that you need. Nine inch pan, either round or square. I prefer the round because I like round cakes and you know, uh, wedges of brownies also really cool with ice cream. A loaf pan, just standard size bread loaf pan for your occasional breads. Uh, this is, this comes in handy also for all sorts of mise en place, uh, chopped vegetables when you're getting ready to make a stew or whatnot. Very, very functional, also easy to put away. Cookie sheet, sheet pan, always, always, always a sheet pan. This one um, is also has a uh, coating on it. It's not necessarily non-stick, but it does have, but it does um, keep things off the pan really, really nicely. And finally, uh, the casserole dish. Uh, anyone from the Midwest is like myself is going to have tremendous amount of flashbacks from various uh, church gatherings and whatnot. This is, uh, I use this primarily for uh, lasagna when I make it, uh, but again, if, uh, if you need to impress your Wisconsin boyfriend or girlfriend, this is what you make, uh, this is what you make tater tot hot dish in. Let's move on to smallwares, shall we? All right, smallwares. So what do we got? Uh, let's start first with uh, measuring cups. Uh, a set of measuring spoons liquid and dry measuring cups. Uh, this one I particularly like because it is graduated in both grams and in imperial, uh, which comes in very handy for me personally. After those, mixing bowls, one or two. Uh, I prefer stainless steel. Uh, if you have glass, absolutely fine, no problem whatsoever. I like stainless steel because they're light, they stack really well, and they tend to be much deeper. You want a nice deep mixing bowl, with a lot of area for, with, for when you use your next most important tool, your whip, so things don't go sliding out the top of it all the time. After your whip, rubber spatula, also very important getting your ingredients out of said bowls and into your baking dishes and or cookware. Really only need three kinds of spoons. This is a big battered, weathered, uh, olive wood spoon. You, any kind of regular spoon is fine. A slotted spoon is also very handy. I also have something called a saucing spoon. I use this quite a bit also. Finally, we move on to spatulas. Uh, my go-to spatula is a fish spatula. Uh, very inexpensive, nice and thin, can get underneath stuff really well. Big fan. Uh, a large spatula, always good to have around. And of course, a spice, uh, pie spatula for pies, cakes, whatever. Uh, just nice and thin, really easy to hang on to. I threw the microplane zester in. Uh, it's not necessarily, you know, crucial, but I find myself going to this piece of equipment over and over and over again for everything from zesting Parmesan cheese on top of pastas to uh, lemon zest, which I really, really like in a lot of my savory dishes. Uh, just a nice cheap piece of equipment again that I find myself going to time and time again. Finally, the last two pieces that I really can't stress enough their importance. Get yourself a pepper grinder. Pepper grinders, pepper out of a pepper grinder is so so much so much superior to just ground pepper pre-made. Get a pepper grinder. They're not expensive. Grab one. Also, small dish with kosher salt. Iodized regular salt, 
is good for essentially nothing. Buy kosher salt, you'll thank me for it later. Finally, something very often overlooked are kitchen towels. Uh, I always have two around that are dry and hang out one for wet. Uh, you want these to be dry because this is what you pick up your pots and pans and things out of the oven with. Unless you're really, really committed to oven mitts, I just find them bulky and not very useful. Uh, if these are wet, you will get burned and you will have a bad day. So, that's small wares. The next episode, like I said before, we're going to discuss uh, cutting boards, knives, and knife care, and explain why my knives rock and your knives suck. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Also, you can catch me on the web at uh, www.urbankitchenrevolution.com, on Twitter at James Hudson UKR, and on Facebook at Urban Kitchen Revolution. Until next time, thanks again, and again, don't forget to smash that like button. Bye.